Today is Wednesday, July 3rd. We're talking about a new government report that takes a closer look at conditions at the border and what to expect from President Trump's 4th of July celebration. Plus the World Cup, a balloon that provides internet, and a new Instagram feature. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. We start today with a new report that shows serious problems at the border, specifically with the already controversial detention centers. An independent government watchdog found the facilities have serious overcrowding and released photos documenting the issue. Fox News reports inspectors describe children not having access to showers and hot meals for too long. And they say there's an immediate risk to the health and safety of both agents and officers, as well as the migrant families detained. There's also the issue of how long some migrants have been held at these facilities. CBS News reports the problem is that resources are limited. Remember, the U.S. has faced an unprecedented surge of Central American families crossing the U.S.-Mexico border, seeking asylum. So what now? Well, the New York Times reports two committees in the House have called for hearings on Capitol Hill next week to discuss these conditions. And by the way, a federal judge ruled yesterday the Trump administration must give asylum seekers bond hearings. This allows them to at least ask a judge to be released on bond while they wait for their legal cases to play out. But the Trump administration had planned to stop that practice and keep migrants in custody. So the Justice Department plans to appeal. It's now official. The 2020 census will not include the question, are you a U.S. citizen? CNBC reports the census is now officially printing without that question. It marks the end of a controversial debate and legal battle. Remember, President Trump wanted to add the question, calling it common sense. But the U.S. Supreme Court stopped it, saying so far there's not a good enough reason to make the change. It means the 2020 census will go out on time next year, despite the president's talk of maybe trying to delay it. Of course, the census is a survey that goes out every 10 years to give information about the U.S. population. But while that legal battle is over, there's a new one on Capitol Hill now. House Democrats are taking the Trump administration to court over President Trump's taxes. NPR reports the House committee is suing both the Treasury Department and the IRS. The departments have denied multiple requests and even a subpoena to hand over Trump's tax returns. To be continued. New details now about President Trump's plan for a massive celebration in Washington, D.C. for Independence Day tomorrow. The Washington Post reports the National Park Service plans to use $2.5 million to help pay for the celebration. The money will come from fees that are typically used to improve the parks. Remember, the 4th of July celebration is called Salute to America, and the president wants it to include military tanks on the ground, military aircraft flyovers, and an extended fireworks show. The president is also expected to give a speech. The Trump administration is not saying exactly how much this year's celebration will cost, but the diverted park fees are apparently just a fraction of the total price tag. The Post says in past years, the entire event has a price tag of about $2 million total. So critics say it's a waste of money and the kind of military display you might see from dictators. But President Trump says this is about paying tribute to the military and America. The U.S. women's soccer team is now moving on to the World Cup final. Team USA beat England 2-1 yesterday. CBS Sports reports the U.S. women's team is now the first team to reach three Women's World Cup finals in a row. And if the U.S. wins the whole thing again, it'll be the first time a country has won back-to-back World Cups since 2007. The U.S. will play either Sweden or the Netherlands in the final, depending on who wins today's game. The Women's World Cup final is then Sunday. All right, we have more news ahead, but first I want to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of amazing classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. You can take online classes in everything from photography and creative writing to design, productivity, and more. So whether you're returning to a longtime passion project or challenging yourself to get outside of your comfort zone, Skillshare has classes for you. I think it's so important to never stop learning, both for the health of our brains and just for our happiness. Right now, my focus is improving the systems in my business as I grow. So I have Skillshare videos on my playlist right now to help with that and managing a team. So join millions of other students learning on Skillshare. And get this, the Newsworthy listeners get a special offer for two months free. Skillshare is offering the Newsworthy listeners two months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free. 
So sign up at Skillshare.com slash newsworthy. Again, that's Skillshare.com slash newsworthy to start your two months free. Skillshare.com slash newsworthy. All right, now back to the news. The world's largest beer maker is going public in what could be the world's largest initial public offering this year. Anheuser-Busch InBev is the owner of Budweiser and Bud Light. The Wall Street Journal reports the company is set to debut on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange later this month, and it's looking to raise $9.8 billion. Even if it doesn't do quite as well as expected, CNBC reports it will likely still be the biggest IPO this year, beating the $8 billion Uber raised from its IPO. Internet from a balloon? It's happening. TechCrunch says the Google spinoff company Loon just got the OK to start its first commercial trial in Kenya. Loon wants to provide internet service to areas that are usually underserved, and it plans on using a high-altitude balloon with a solar-powered cellular network to do it. In the trial run, Loon will partner with a Kenya internet carrier to offer 4G service to people who live in the mountains. Reuters reports wireless carriers in other countries want proof Loon can actually provide reliable, safe, and profitable service before they get on board, too. But Loon already has some competition. SpaceX, for example, is working on something similar, but with satellites. Another movie ticket subscription program is in the works, this time for Regal Cinemas. The movie theater chain is still working out all the details, but Deadline reports the service will be called Regal Unlimited. There will be apparently three plans to choose from, ranging from $18 to $24 a month. Each plan will give you access to unlimited tickets, but the cheaper the plan, the fewer theaters you have access to, meaning if you pay the top price, you have access to all Regal theaters in the U.S. Customers will also get a discount on concessions. This will help Regal compete with similar services from companies like MoviePass and AMC. And Gizmodo says it's a way to keep people going to the movies. The new service is expected to roll out later this month. You may notice a new feature on Instagram now. It's for group chat. You or a friend can add a sticker to your Instagram story that lets people request access to join the chat. It gives the person posting the power to decide who's in or who's out. Instagram says this is for people who want to have a big group conversation about something or for making plans. All right, a quick note about the 4th of July tomorrow. Of course, it's a federal holiday, so many people will be off work and school tomorrow to celebrate, and government offices will be closed. Of course, don't expect to get your mail on Thursday either. The holiday celebrates America's independence. Back on July 2nd, 1776, Congress voted in favor of independence, and two days later, on the 4th, delegates from the 13 colonies adopted the Declaration of Independence. And because of the holiday, there will be no episode of The Newsworthy on Thursday, but we will be back catching you up on everything you might have missed on Friday. So, happy 4th of July. And that's it. You are all caught up. If you want to read more about any of the stories we talked about, you can check out the show notes in today's episode description in your podcast app or on thenewsworthy.com. Have a great holiday, and I'll be back with more news on Friday. <laughs>